Hey, Gilfez is right around the corner, so you know the rules around here. Sorry I was stalling for the past month again getting this video out. The spreadsheet that X0 and SOA was working on that I was planning to use as a main reference for this video got hella delayed and just got released like 8 hours ago. And I was working on other videos and getting to level 120 in Arknights in the meantime. The references I will be using will all be linked in the description below, so make sure to check them out to help with your own individual Gilfest preparations. Quick little disclaimer, which I hope should be obvious by this point, three years into the game, but all the teams that are listed here in this video are intended to help you put together the best and most efficient teams that are available to you. Obviously, not everyone can just bust out the best teams for every rotation, so even if you can't replicate the teams you see here, you should work to come up with replacements wherever you see fit. Let's start with the basic info. Gilfest is like Neurofest from the past two years in that it's divided into rotations, prelims, semis, and finals, and each of them have different notes for bronze, silver, gold, and lottery currencies. For the sake of brevity, we'll only discuss lottery currency node teams for this video, but you should clear out shop during round one, so so that you get it out of the way sooner rather than later. For prelims, this is the Lotto node with Romulus and Caligula. Keep in mind that because you'll more than likely be using round 1 to clear out shop, and because you're looking for more Caldea Kitchen Truck or CKT drops, it's generally better for you to prioritize 3 turning and time efficiency. In other words, don't worry about your Lotto currency drop efficiency as much for round 1. Use whatever you can to speed up your runs. Also, pretty much all the nodes in Gilfest can drop you either Return Match, which is the power Power Mod C for this event, CKT, or Dollar Cent Shop, so try not to get too salty if you get a CE drop and it isn't CKT. Let's get the Scotty memes out of the way first. The spreadsheet that I'm taking these teams from, courtesy of Zvi, assumes that your DPSs are MP3 or higher. DSS should work, but you need to use one of your Scotty S2s on Wave 2, since the Dragon has a lot of HP, and Dante's needs a bit more help with that. If you have 2k4, Dante's should clean kill Wave 3, and Zerkerlot should work as well. Also, remember that Romulus is a Lancer and therefore has magic resist, so don't expect your Scotty S2s to work all the time. A non Scotty team that doesn't involve looping, while well, not in the way you think, that Gotcha posted on the Farmville Discord is Nidacris, Saber, and Scotty. Nido handles Wave 1 and Saber kills both Wave 2 and 3 now that she's got her own 30% battery. Scotty uses her S2 to help Saber with Wave 2, so that way, even if you low roll, you should be able to kill the dragon with any of your face cards. Wave 3 will likely rely on you using whatever your strongest relevant mystic code is, because again, if you low roll, you'll find yourself carting the rest of the HP down. Gotcha assumes level 10 arctic mystic code, but since that's not most of you, take 2k4 or any blonde or something else instead. Note that if you have a grailed saber, or if you can get a friend to put up their own grailed saber for you, they have the potential to straight up one-shot wave 3 with this setup. A janky variation of this is double waver with both saber and her son, and this team has the potential of 3 turn, though it relies on card RNG on wave 1 for it. But even if you get bad card RNG, you don't need to use any of your buffs, so you can just take another turn to finish off wave 1 with cards before going into the rest of the node. The node for semis looks like this with Donzo and Kotaro. Again, Dante's and Zerkalot can meme this, but for Dante's he actually suffers from attribute disadvantage against the Orochi, so you have to use his S1 here, or maybe a Scotty S2 to give him some more damage. 2k4 should help DSS secure this node though. Honestly, Zerkerlot is probably straight up better than Dante's for this node, so consider using him for semis if you have access to both. Here's where arts teams come into play. Technically, you can use them in prelims too, but they're not consistent, but since there are assassins here for rotation 2, they are now. Hope you didn't burn Z because he's the star of the show here with Perry, Scotty, and Waver. Use Perry to clear wave 1, and Z takes care of the rest. Double Waver or Waver Scotty are both good for a clean 3 turn. There's even a 6 slot Z team that has you charge Zeke's NP by 10% manually in case you're interested in that. Cutie Kitsune has worked on a very free to play friendly variant of the Z team just now where you take only one waiver and your choice of MCs is between Mages, 2k4, and the recent Summer Arts MC. Wave 1 will always be RNG because you need to get Z 20% charge from an Arts Chain or other face cards, but each of the MCs have their own little perks for this rotation, so make sure to check out Kitsune's spreadsheet in the description to learn more. A non-looping team that Gotcha on Farmville 
also came up with is parry and double Nido. The idea is that you bring mages to top parry off for wave 1, then use one Nido with a max level CKT for wave 2, and your second Nido with a max Nero CE for wave 3. The biggest hurdle for this team, other than max leveling two separate CEs for this event, is wave 2. Unless you bring a grailed Nido with max CKT, it's never going to be a clean kill, and therefore, you need to fish for the proper face cards for a clean kill. Either you need to have a brave chain from your wave 2 Nido, or any one face card from the Nido with the Nero CE will work. The good thing is that if you don't get the cards you're looking for in wave 2, Mages has the card shuffle skill to potentially bail you out. This team is very useful because if you can get consistent RNG with it, you literally only use 4 skills and 1 or maybe 2 Mystic Code skills throughout the entire fight, so it's very fast. Another non-looping team that's also a potential 6th slot is a Da Vinci, Nido, and Double Waver team. Nido double kills the first 2 waves and DV nukes the last one, though unless you have a super Da Vinci who's both grailed and high MP level, you'll have to deal with quite a bit of card RNG to finish Donzo off. Finals is where things get a bit insane. There are quite a few teams that people have come up with this that I'll link in the description below, but I'll only go over the teams that I feel are most important. For starters, this is the node with Musashi and Osakabe Hime. Musashi also has magic resist as a saber, so beware of her noping your Scotty S2s. For DSS, you'll need to use one Scotty S2 on wave 2 to help Dante's kill the Spriggan, which seems to be a recurring theme for this event. And as usual, ZSS should be able to do this as well. Nianta can work for this node, but she has to be at least MP4, otherwise she just won't do enough damage to get enough refund off Wave 1. You also need to use one Scotty S2 on Wave 1 on top of that, but she is an option if you want to use her or have to. Jarcher replaces Zeeg as the premier arts meme for finals, and she's got two teams, courtesy of Ark. One is a 6 slot team involving her, Perry, Waver, and Scotty, or a second Waver. You need an MP5 Jarcher, or at least a max grailed MP2 or 3 Jarcher for this to be at all consistent, so it's a very whale team. Double Waver is also preferred for this team, because Musashi can resist Scotty's S2, so taking Double Waver circumvents that. But if you give Jarcher a Limit Broken Nero CE, she should be able to clean kill Wave 3 even at MP1, so if you have all the servants in the 6 slot team that we just mentioned, you should be able to easily 5 slot this node. Gotcha also has a few non-looping teams for finals, but even he warns that these are far from ideal. You can either do a perfect Ishtar or Perfect Gil team, where you give them Nidacris and Waver as teammates and take a strong Mystic Code like Arctic or something, but that involves Ishtar or Gil being Max Grailed, NP5, and Max Goldfode, on top of giving Super Scope to your Archer DPS. But hey, if you want to use either of them for farming finals, you can play around with those. A big brain team that Gotcha also threw in is a Parry Jarcher Waver team. You use Parry to clear wave 1 and Jarcher to double kill waves 2 and 3, and she refunds at least 60% off wave 2, so that she just needs her 40% battery going into wave 3. The catch is that she needs Fondant to give this team the best chance of 3 turning consistently. Fondant is the 50% Charger CE from Valentine's last year, and it gives 30% power mod against Divine, which which is what Jarcher needs to kill Osakabe Hime. If you do not have this CE, you can actually buy it from the Rare Mana Prism shop if you're willing to do that. Even at MP5 though, a level 90 Jarcher still has a small chance of leaving both of them alive, and we're assuming you have Fondant at max level, so consider this your only warning if you want to try this team out. You can replace Fondant with HND if you don't have the former, but it's a lot less consistent because you're not getting the big power mod bonus against Neat. Again, check the description, I'll post links to videos of teams that you can hopefully use that applied around three, but these are the ones that I felt like talking about in this video. As usual though, all credits for the references and resources that I use in this video belong to their respective owners. Thanks for being patient with my stalling, and good luck with Guildfest.